Dear MBA students, the topic of today's lecture is an overview of Islamic financial system. which is basically the very first lecture of your module of the course Islamic Banking and Insurance which is normally uh, taken in your fifth semester. So we are going to talk about what is a financial system first and then we will try to highlight the difference between a conventional financial system and an Islamic financial system. Before anything else, we have to understand something very simply. What is the main job of a financial system? What is expected from a financial system? We all know that a financial system is supposed to facilitate the connection, facilitate the interaction between two types of people within an economy. One type of people have excess money at their hand. They are normally called savers. On the other hand, another type of people within that economy are is always in short of money. So they are basically in deficit of required money. So we see that it, within an economy there is a group of people who has excess money and another group of people who are in short of money. So there has to be a mechanism through which these two groups of people or these two types of people can interact with each other. That is the mechanism which is called the financial system. So a financial system is name of a mechanism through which the surplus unit of an economy and the deficit unit of the same economy can interact with each other. In other words, the funds can flow from the surplus unit to the deficit unit. So this mechanism is normally known as a financial system. This is a very much integral part of every economy in the world. So, when we talk about a financial system, the most important goal of a financial system is to ensure efficiency of the system. In other words, the system will attempt to make sure that funds from the surplus unit is flowing to the deficit unit as and when required and also the funds which have been invested anywhere in the economy is earning the maximum return with minimum risks. So that is the basically simple concept of efficiency although that concept of efficiency can be um, enlarged to incorporate many other things which you can uh, learn from the module by looking at the module you can you know know all about the concepts of efficiency. Now let us move to another part which is very much important for us to understand at this moment. What are the components of financial system? There are normally three components of a financial system. Number one, financial markets. Number two, financial institutions. And number three, financial products or services which are normally offered by those financial institutions in the financial market. So we have three components. One is financial market, financial institution and then financial products and services. We will elaborate on these three components one after the other. What is financial market? A financial market is a system is a, is, a, is a mechanism through which buyers and sellers of financial products and services can interact with each other. That is the financial market. It does not need to be a specific place 
wherever these products are uh, basically exchanged between buyers and sellers, that can be a financial market. It can be a, it can be a specific place like uh, stock exchange or it can be over the phone or over the internet, anywhere else. Normally we have different types of markets within a financial system and uh, the lecture module talks about different types of financial markets in details. We can cite, for example, names of few markets. One of the market is uh, primary market versus secondary market. So what is primary market? Primary market is that market where financial institutions offer their products to the buyers for the first time. That is the primary market. For example, if a company wants to sell its shares to buyers, they can offer these shares in the market which is known as primary market. On the other hand, the secondary market is normally known as that market where already issued or outstanding financial products and services are bought and sold. In other words, once the primary market finishes the transaction between buyer and sellers and then the buyers and sellers can go to secondary market to repurchase or resell their financial products or uh, services. One of the reason of interaction in secondary market is the necessity for liquidity. Somebody has bought a financial service or product which is for example two years uh, which, which has two years maturity period. But the person who has bought it may need money quite earlier. So what he can do, he can sell it in the secondary market. Another type of financial market is spot market or future market right? or forward market. Spot market is that market where any financial product right, like um, uh, bonds, shares, securities are bought and sold uh, for immediate delivery. So I buy it now and I pay the price, I get it delivered to me now. That is the spot market. On the other hand, the future market or the forward market is that market where a contract can be negotiated today but not for delivery today. It will be delivered some later period at a later time which has been agreed by two periods. Obviously the price can be negotiated and fixed today but for, but for future delivery of the product. So these are the different types of uh, markets. Second component of a financial system is known as financial institution. There are many financial institutions uh, which are part of a financial system. For example, commercial banks, insurance companies, leasing companies, investment banks, these are different types of financial institutions within a financial system. Some of these financial institutions are known as financial intermediary. Financial intermediaries normally help savers and borrowers of an economy to interact with each other through a different, through an organization. That organization is known as financial intermediary. An example of financial intermediary is commercial bank. Normally in an underdeveloped economy, this may happen that the savers and borrowers do not know each other. Then they take help of another institution which will bring them together and they, uh, those institutions help the financial transactions to take place. However, as the system or as the economy uh, gets developed more and more, there is high possibility that savers and borrowers will interact with each other directly, right? In that case, 
financial institutions other than intermediaries, for example, investment bank, which can act now as financial facilitator, right? For example, a broker or a dealer in a, in any stock exchange can help savers and borrowers or buyers and sellers of stocks, bonds, securities to complete the transaction. So while banks like commercial banks, insurance companies, these are helping indirect finance within an economy, dealers and brokers within that financial system are basically helping direct finance to take place. The third component of a financial system is financial products and services. So obviously financial institutions issue financial products to the consumers or to the buyers. They buy financial services and then they can sell it again in the market. So in order to meet different types of needs of financial uh, players within that market, there has to be an array of financial products and services. One of the goal of financial services and products is to cater for different types of taste and need of consumers. For example, some consumers have taste for higher risk. They are willing to take on more risks because they expect high return. On the other hand, some uh, consumers or some players are risk averse. They are not interested to take on risk. So they look for those financial services and products which have moderate risk profile. So when a company or financial institution designs different types of financial product and services, it has to take care of different tastes and preferences of consumers or buyers within that financial market. So we see that a financial system has three components which have been already talked about. Now the question is already we have a financial system around us across the globe which is normally known as the conventional financial system. What we are going to do then in this lecture is trying to introduce to you a different concept which is known as Islamic financial system. As we go through the whole module, we will be able to understand details of Islamic financial system, but for this moment, it is important for us to understand the very basic difference between a conventional financial system and an Islamic financial system. An Islamic financial system is basically nothing but a financial system. Whatever a conventional financial system is supposed to do, an Islamic financial system is also supposed to do the same thing. So what we have learned is very simple. A financial system is going to ensure efficient flow of fund from surplus unit to the deficit unit. Similarly, an Islamic financial system is there to ensure smooth flow of funds from surplus unit within an economy to deficit unit. So what is the big difference then? The difference is basically lying in designing the financial system itself, how it is designed. Okay, so once we know that Islamic financial system and conventional financial system, they have something in common that both of them are trying to efficiently cater for the needs of consumers, buyers and sellers within an economy. We then closely understand what is an Islamic financial system. 
one of the major goal of a financial system is to ensure efficiency. But in addition to this goal, an Islamic financial system also takes care of some other goals which have been prescribed by the religion Islam. So we assume that there are some players within the financial markets. There are some buyers and sellers in a financial market who have certain preferences and tastes for financial products and services which do not contradict or do not violate Islamic norms. So an Islamic financial system ensures that while savers and borrowers, surplus and deficit units are interacting with each other efficiently, they are also conforming to the Islamic injunctions and rules. Now what are those, those rules and injunction, injunctions which uh, uh, has been or have been prescribed by Islam? Normally we refer to something which is known as Sharia. Sharia is an Arabic word which means a set of rules, right? Which means a set of systems. So what we are doing here, basically while we are performing financial transactions, we try to also ensure that our transactions do not violate Islamic norms or do not violate Sharia in any manner. This module will uh, elaborately talk about what are the Islamic norms. We will try to learn the basic or the major norms of Islamic financial system in the next lecture. But let me conclude this part of lecture by summarizing what I have said. I said an, an Islamic financial system is supposed to perform the same tasks of a conventional financial system. The only difference is that an Islamic financial system has been designed in such a way that the consumers, buyers and sellers are conforming to Sharia, are conforming to Islamic rules and norms while they are transacting their uh, financial services. This is uh, um, what is called analogous to an example. For example, when you buy a product, say a, an item of food which you are going to eat up, what you do? You can buy this piece of anything, say piece of cake, you buy it from the market. Now a market or a system will ensure that you can buy that piece of cake at a certain price and somebody is selling that piece of cake at a certain price under certain transaction system. Now when we introduce the concept of Islam in this market, all I am saying is that that piece of cake has to be according to the specifications that Islam prefers, that Islam likes us to take care of. For example, haram and halal. We say that we will not buy a piece of cake which includes haram ingredients. That's it, nothing else. And moreover, when we are transacting with each other, right, we certainly follow a, a, con a transaction system. We enter into a contract. Now that contract also has to be legitimate in the eye of Islam, that's it. So whether you are Muslim or not Muslim, doesn't matter. A financial system which is claiming to be Islamic must take care of both type of financial, um, what is called uh, both type of players within a market, either Muslim or non-Muslim. That's why we see around the globe today, these financial products which are conforming to Sharia are being offered in many countries and most of them are not Muslim countries. As an example, 
we can cite the name of United Kingdom where HSBC, a very much conventional bank, Standard Chartered, a very much conventional bank, Lawyers TSB, a very much conventional bank. These are offering products to consumers or to savers on the basis of Islamic principles. And we know back in our own country, HSBC has recently offered HSBC Amana product. And this product was offered initially in United Kingdom exactly five years ago. They tested it there first and then they have brought it to this market. So what they are doing? They are trying to design a product which is HSBC Amana product which conforms to Islamic Sharia. So in this module, we will learn details of Islamic financial system and especially two components of Islamic financial system. One is functioning of commercial bank under Islamic principles and functioning of insurance companies under Islamic financial system. Thank you very much.